The data attribute block begins with its signature of 80, 00, 00, 00. 00. This is followed by the attribute length in bytes, which includes the header. This is hex 48, which is 72 in decimal. So the entire data attribute block is 72 bytes. The next byte is the non-resident flag. In the first lecture in this series, I mentioned that resident data was stored within the master file table record itself, while non-resident data was stored in cluster runs on the hard drive. When this flag is set to 01, which this field currently is, it means that the file's contents are non-resident. You can see further evidence of this by the fact that the second sector of the master file table record contains only zeros. According to the available forensic references, name length and name offset are not used, so they are both set to zeros. The flags field for the data attribute entry for this record is set to 0000, so it is normal. Forensic references are not conclusive as to what kind of ID this field is. This field is populated but not much of use forensically. The next 16 bytes make up the first virtual cluster number and the last virtual cluster number. Virtual cluster numbers are how a file's contents are stored as encoded data runs. Each data run signifies a chain of contiguous clusters that make up part of a file's contents. In order to know the sizes and locations of these contiguous cluster runs, the virtual cluster numbers must be converted into logical cluster numbers. We will get into much more explicit detail on this later in the lecture. Because this particular file is stored as one continuous data run or cluster chain, these two 8-byte fields are set to all zeros. If the stored file was fragmented with several virtual cluster numbers, these two fields would not be zeros. The next two fields are the offset to the data runs. This field is set to 40 hex, which is 64 in decimal. This means that the beginning of the virtual cluster numbers or data runs is 64 bytes from the start of the data attribute block. The next two bytes are the compression unit size. This field is set to 0000, which means that there is no compression. Bytes 36 through 39 are padding, so there is no significance to this field. Bytes 40 through 47 make up the allocated size for the record. This value is determined through cluster sizes. By default, this means that a file is broken up into fragments of 4096 bytes each. If the final fragment of a file is less than 4096 bytes, that amount of space is still allocated. What is left over and not part of the file being stored is known as slack space. The size of this allocated size field is 1000 in hex, which is 4096 bytes in size or exactly one cluster. The following 8 bytes is the real size of the file. This is the actual size in bytes of the file being stored. The previous field referred to the size of the file in terms of the container that was storing it, which is why it was larger. The slack space is not included in the real size of the file. The next 8 bytes is the initialized size of the file. This field is the same as the real size of the file. There is no difference of forensic value between these two fields. The final 8 bytes of this data attribute block make up the data runs field. This is the field that was referenced at offset 32 and 33. These are the encoded data runs which specify where in memory the contiguous clusters of a file reside. There is only one data run to decode here. The first byte in the sequence of numbers is the number of interest for us. It is what allows us to decode the rest of the chain. The chain ends with a 00, zero as the final byte. The first byte, in this case 31 hex, is split into two parts, or two nibbles, 
The 3 and the 1 each have their own significance to decoding this chain. First, the right value, a 1, gives us the number of bytes that will determine the size of our cluster run. To this first byte's immediate right, we count 1 byte. This gives us a 0, 1. This is the number of clusters in this run. If we go back to our first byte and take the left value, a 3, that gives us the number of bytes that tell us what offset uh, in memory is where this data run begins. If we count just past the byte that we use to give us our number of clusters, we count 3 bytes. This gives us D1, D5, and 0, 1. If we convert this value as little endian, this gives us the cluster where the data run begins. 0, 1, D5, D1 in decimal is 120,273. That is the cluster number. If we multiply this value by 8, then by 512, it gives us the byte offset. The byte 00, zero which follows next, means that this is the end of our data runs. In the following section, I will demonstrate a more complicated example where the file's contents are fragmented over several data runs. This is a complicated process, but by repetition, the mechanism of how this process works should help you to understand a little bit better. In this example, I'm going to demonstrate how to find all the contents of a file by locating its cluster chains in memory. This particular file is a log file associated with my antivirus program from my laptop computer. Its component clusters have been fragmented into nine cluster chains or cluster runs. The offset to where the cluster run information is located is stored at byte 32 of the data attribute block. We see here that the value stored at this location is 0040 hex, which is 64 in decimal. So 64 bytes from the start of the attribute begins the cluster run information. Here at byte offset 64 is the first of our cluster runs. The first byte gives us the information that we need to decode where the cluster run is located. The first byte at this location is hex 41. Now we split this byte in half. The right digit tells us how many clusters are in this particular run. Disk editor already has it highlighted for us. The right digit is a 1, so if we count one byte to the right, that tells us how many clusters are in this run. That one byte gives us a hex value of 0, 2, which is a 2 in decimal. So there are two clusters in this run. If we go back to our first byte in this series, our byte with 41 value, we look at the digit on the left side. This is a 4. That 4 gives us the collective number of bytes, which tells us the address where that cluster run is located in memory. This is the byte offset. The four bytes that we are concerned with here are F8, 38, C7, and 01. Remember, this has to be converted as little endian, so it will be converted as 01, C7, 38, F8. This converts to 29,833,464. This is the byte offset in memory where the first cluster run begins. And we now already know that this cluster run is two clusters in length. That is the end of our first cluster run. Now on to our next cluster run. Now once again we take our very first byte that is currently highlighted for us by disk editor and we split it in two. This gives us a 2 and a 1. We look at the value to the right first, which is the 1. The value of 1 tells us that if we count one byte, it will give us the number of clusters in this run. After we count one byte, we get a value of hex 0, 2. This is 2 in decimal. This means that there are two clusters in this run. Now that we know the number of clusters, we look at our original byte once again. 
It is a 2. It is already highlighted for us. The 2 means that 2 bytes will give us the byte location in memory where this cluster run begins. The 2 bytes gives us C507. Red and Little Endian, that is 07C5. This gives us 29,835,453 in decimal. This is our byte offset in memory. If we look back at our original byte again, we know that this cluster run is two clusters in length. Now for our third cluster run. We take our first byte and we split it in two. We have a 3 and a 1. The digit to the right, a 1, tells us to count one byte to get the number of clusters in the run. If we count one byte, we get a hex 0, 04. This is a 4 in decimal, so there are four clusters in this chain. We go back to our original byte that was split, and we look at the digit to the left, which is a 3. Three bytes, when decoded, gives us the address in memory. The three bytes give us 834301. Read in Little Endian, we get a decimal value of 29918272. This is the address in memory where this cluster run begins. This cluster chain runs for four clusters. Our next cluster run begins with the hex byte 21, which we split in two. Since the right digit is a 1, we count one byte to get our count of clusters in this run. One byte from our count gives us a value of hex 08, which is 8 in decimal. There are 8 clusters in this run. Now we go back to our left digit from our original byte, and we have a 2, which tells us that uh, two bytes when decoded will give us the byte offset in memory. The two bytes give us C0 and FC. Read Little Indian, this gives us 29917440. For this cluster run, that is our memory offset. It runs for eight clusters. For the next cluster run, 31 is our byte of interest. After splitting the byte, the right digit gives us our cluster count. After counting one byte, we get hex 10, which is 16 in decimal. There are 16 clusters in this run. When we take the left digit from our byte of interest, we have 3. 3 bytes gives us our byte offset in memory. 4, 4, 0, B, 0, 0. Red is Little Endian that gives us 29840452. This is our offset. This, uh, this cluster chain runs for 16 clusters. Our next byte of interest is a 31. After splitting the 3 and the 1, we count one byte to get the cluster count, which is a hex 01 or a 1 in decimal. There is one cluster in this run. Three bytes gives us our offset in memory. F7, EF, F9. Red is Little Endian, and this gives us 29443131 in decimal. That is our offset in memory for this cluster run. Our next byte of interest is a hex 21. When we split this in half, we have a 2 and a 1. We count one byte to get our cluster count. This gives us 1f in hex, which is 3 1 in decimal. There are 31 clusters in this run. The left digit from our byte of interest gives us 2. When we count our two bytes, we get c6, e7 in hex which when read Little Endian gives us 29436929.
The next byte of interest is 21. When we split this in half, we have a 2 and a 1. When we count one byte, it gives us 10 in hex, or 16 in decimal. There are 16 clusters in this run. When we take the 2 from our byte of interest, it gives us a byte group of 6b28 in hex. This is our offset in memory where the cluster run begins. When read in Little Endian, it gives us 29, 447, 276. For our last cluster run for this file, the byte of interest is a hex 31. When we split this in half, it gives us a 3 and a 1. We count one byte for our cluster count. We have a hex 01, which is 1 in decimal. There is only one cluster in this last run. We take the 3 from our byte of interest, and it gives us a byte grouping of 0, 0, 5, 2, E4 in hex. When read in Little Indian, it gives us an offset value of 27, 633, 260. This was an example of a more complicated file that had fragmented clusters. If you had to recover a file using this procedure, you would have to extract each of these cluster runs from memory and paste them into an empty hex editor file, making sure to include any required headers and footers. If this was a file uh, such as a high-resolution picture, this process could take hours to execute successfully. This type of surgical forensic procedure might become necessary should an examiner become faced with something like a partially wiped drive. This ends the demonstration.